Good morning, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me again today is Pastor Matthew Richard. Thank you for being here with us again, Pastor. Hey, good to see you, Harrison. You too. How you been? Been good. Uh, busy. <laughs> Always busy. And we talk a little bit beforehand in time and just, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's uh, I've talked to uh, individuals in my church and some of the, the older individuals in my church, they said, you know, I've been busy. The one, one gal said to me, Pastor, I've been busy in my life and I've been bored in my life and it's better to be busy. And so right, I right. consider, you know what, busy, that means I'm still kicking, still breathing. God be praised, right? Yeah, busy keeps me from doing stupid stuff. Um, so that's just fine. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just fine with busy. Um, it, it's it's one of those old ones too. Uh, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that and segue real hard uh, to that very famous Luther quote that when we get to real real busy, we 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 pray uh, longer, not not shorter. Um, but prayer is one of those really ambiguous topics inside of the church because everybody talks about it and everybody seems to mean something different by it. And so this is a really good one for what does Jesus say about prayer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does he say about prayer? Uh, I was studying this morning with a couple other pastors. We're talking about John 16 and there's this little phrase in there. And when he talks about asking in prayer, asking the father in prayer, he say anything you ask and get this in my name. Uh, and so we gloss over that all the time. And, and as we were contemplating this morning, you know, when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. that that's key. So, so I guess, what does that mean? You know, right. Uh, you know, do we pray and are we Pentecostal? We pray in the name of Jesus. Right. And then, and then it's a magical word to make it happen. Right. Um, what does it mean? And, and so I came across this little, this little quote in a, in a commentary. And when we pray in the name of Jesus, we're praying in the, uh, in the context of his promises and his word. And so if we pray in the name of Jesus, we pray that which is consistent with his promises and consistent with his word. And so if I'm praying from a covetous desire or I'm praying for something sinful, um, I'm not praying in the name of Jesus. Even if I use his name, um, that's not consistent. And so, gosh, as I was thinking about this, how oftentimes, I know myself included, how oftentimes do we pray uh, for things or in ways and in, in, in manners that are not consistent with the word of God and not consistent, con not consistent with the promises of Jesus. And then we get upset that these, maybe these simple prayers, call them, we'll just call them simple prayers, that these simple prayers that we have, we get upset that they don't get answered. Well, they don't get answered because they're not in the name of Jesus. They're not consistent with his word. They're not consistent with his promises. And so we think of it as a, as a father to a son or a father to a daughter. Um, if my kids ask me for something that's going to hurt them, um, because I love them, I'm not going to honor their request. Uh, I'm going to deny their request because what they ask is what, what could hurt them. And so we always get, need to remember that when we ask, uh, you know, the Lord for, for things in prayer, uh, when, we get an, when we get a yes answer, it's because he loves us. And when we get a no answer, it's because he loves us. Right. You're starting with with um, the identity of Jesus instead of uh, just what we want. And then it gets a little bit easier to sort of address the the no. Um, so I can say, like, can I have a pony in Jesus name? Amen. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I understand, like, I can make a case like a pony wouldn't be bad for my body, but there might be a case where it'd be bad for my soul. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, think about all the things that, I mean, think about this too, like how, how we pray the Lord's prayer. I mean, we, the Lord's prayer rolls off our tongue, which is good. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that's bad. It's good that we can just, uh, you know, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we just, we just, we just say it off of it, of our tongue rolls off. But if we're going to be really honest with it, I, I know honest with myself, I know for myself uh, that if I were to pray the Lord's prayer, the way that I want to pray, it, it would be not the Lord's prayer, it'd be Matt Richard's prayer. And it was also, it, it, it was also like this. Person. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, it'd be, it'd be instead of our father, it'd be, oh, Matt, <laughs> oh, Matt, um, holy is your name, Matt Richard, um, Matt Richard's kingdom come, uh, Matt Richard's will be done in <laughs> heaven as it is in Matt Richard's kingdom. Right. And so right. it'd be very, 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 uh, Matt Richard centered. And so, if we think about the Lord's prayer, we're asking the father's will to be done, not our will be done. We're asking his name to be holy, not our name to be holy. We're asking that he would give us daily bread and in all these gifts that would be given to us. And so the very right all the gates, how we pray the Lord's prayer, uh, it's aligned with the promises and the words of Jesus, because it is from Jesus. He teaches us how, teaches us how to pray. And so to contemplate from that perspective, um, the words that we say in our prayer life, 
Uh, is it consistent with the name of Jesus or is it consistent with our sinful nature? Absolutely. And then we get to deal with his word says some things we don't always like. Um, our catechism tells us fasting and bodily preparation are certainly fine outward training. And I'm not okay with that on just a personal level that likes to eat. Um, and <laughs> it, it actually sort of confronts, give us this day, our daily bread, where there might be a time where God says, you know what, this is actually a really good time for you to fast. And I don't know what to make of that because I want to get to the, you will, you will receive it. Not the, in my name. Yeah. In the words, right. Well, and the other thing though, too, is when it comes to prayer, I, I think there, there, there's a, you know, I like the word reverence. I've been kind of on this idea of reverence, the kick of reverence lately. And, and maybe it's just because I'm getting a little bit older, but I think nonetheless, I think it also is not something we see in this world as much being reverent and, and, and to be in awe and to uh, uh, slow down with life. And, and I think when it comes to prayer, I think oftentimes I know for myself include that we can be so flippant with prayer where we just, it just rolls off of our tongue and we don't often understand what we're asking. In fact, you know, thinking about asking for prayer, sometimes the Lord will answer our prayers and he does that through suffering. And uh, I shared this with somebody the other day that I prayed once upon a time, I prayed when uh, I went from working more hands-on with youth to preaching in the pulpit more, more full time. Uh, and, and I prayed this prayer as I was being installed, Lord, uh, may I be a faithful pastor. And, uh, Gosh, that was a foolish prayer. <laughs> uh, uh, because I, I truly believe the Lord heard, well, obviously he hears our prayers, but he heard that prayer and he answered it by teaching me uh, to suffer. And he taught me what it meant to be a faithful pastor by by grinding me down to nothing and grinding off all the, these edges. It's like, it's like taking uh, 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 gold. And if you want to refine gold, you got to turn the heat up and then those impurities rise to be scraping that off. And, and uh, man, I had, and I still do. Uh, the Lord had so much that he had to what scrape off of Matt Richard uh, to shape and mold me to be a faithful pastor. And he still does. And so that's a, that's a terrifying prayer. Lord, help me to be faithful uh, because typically he'll accomplish that by, by causing us to suffer and to, to repent uh, and to be grounded in him, to trust in him and not on ourselves. And frankly, I like to trust in myself. And so, ouch, huh? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's one of those things too, when you, you, you start to think about the object of, of your faithfulness. And so if it's Lord teaching me to be faithful, um, teach me to be faithful to Christ crucified. And if, if I'm wanting to be closer to a cross, cross is hurt. Yeah. Um, there's glory there, but it, it, it hurts. Yeah. There's, there's an old, there's an old uh, Norwegian uh, Lutheran pastor. I once remember reading, he said, the essence of prayer is basically helplessness. And we see it right with the uh, Kyrie, uh, with with the uh, blind Bartimaeus. You know, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. That's that's a voice of prayer. In fact, that's one of the first things we say when we come into our divine services on Sunday. We, we say, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. It's a cry for mercy, a cry for help, and that disposition of being helpless and being uh, in a position where we need to be taken care of. And frankly, my my, my sinful nature hates that position. I don't want to be helpless. But at the same time, um, according to my new man, my new, new, new man in Christ, uh, I'd rather be in no other place than depending on Jesus because then it doesn't depend on me. And so it's this twofold uh, battle all the time when we pray. We're battling against our sinful nature and also at the same time resting in Jesus. And just to think that the Lord, in spite of that, he still hears our prayers and he is so good to us. And, and oftentimes he even gives us gifts that we don't even ask for. Uh, and that we don't even see, he rains down these wonderful gifts upon us. And then when we step back, we're like, oh my goodness, he's been taking care of me all this long and providing for me, uh, not only for my bodily needs, but for my spiritual needs too, uh, granting me the forgiveness of sins and giving me assurance, giving us assurance, uh, reminding us of our baptisms and sustaining us in this life. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we talk about prayer. And I, I used to get told this thing I hated when I was growing up that as beggars can't be choosers. Uh, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And so there's this this posture of prayer where, where it's just raw need um, that, that makes up a prayer that, that makes me uncomfortable because I want to choose what I'm going to get. Uh, because if I can't choose it, that means it's up to somebody else's mercy and choice. And not only do I think I'm smarter than everybody, usually including God, Lord have mercy and me a sinner, but I, I know I have a different will than God, Lord have mercy and me a sinner. Uh, but it's actually a really freeing thing because when we start to focus in on the name of Jesus, when we pray in Jesus name, it's not just how you close your prayer in Jesus name, amen, but it's a focus on his character. 
So who is this God that you're letting call the shots here? Is, is he a good God or, or a bad God? Is he a smart God or a dumb God? Is he an impotent God or a powerful God? If he is holier than you, has a, a better focus than you, if he's smarter than you, if he, he can do more than you, well, then when he is calling the shots, even if there are the things I don't like at the time, prayer becomes a comfort instead of just a vending machine. Um, because yeah, here I'm, yeah. I'm focused on a, a God who actually wants to take care of me and has already promised to. And so regardless of how things start to go from that point, I know that I am praying in accordance with God's word because his word is to save me a sinner. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't, I can't say anything better. I mean, it's, it's, it's in the name of Jesus is according to uh, the promises of God, which are for, for us, beautiful promises. I mean, the scripture is full of promises for us. And then also consistent with, with all of his word, um, his word, including uh, law and gospel uh, and, and praying. And that's the reason why, I mean, when we look at prayer, uh, I once heard it said by another a theologian, he said that, that uh, prayer is the voice of faith. And so in essence, only Christians can truly pray because without prayer, it's, uh, excuse me, without faith, it's not prayer. And so this, this prayer is the voice of faith. It's the voice of the Christian uh, confessing our needs, confessing our struggles, but then also having our prayer life uh, shaped by the word of God and having that prayer, the prayers shaped by what is good and true uh, and his promises for us. And so remembering in our prayer that uh, if we're struggling, uh, whatever it may be, you know, if we're struggling with, with sin, you know, praying, Lord God, uh, smite that sin, crucify that sin unto, unto yourself and grant me strengthening of faith, uh, claiming again, in a sense, not, not, not naming and claiming like a, in, in like the, uh, a Pentecostal way, but, but, but claiming and understanding those promises are for us personally. And that God delivers on his promises of surety for us. I love it. Pastor. Thanks so much for joining us on the drive school. Yeah. Good to see you, Harrison. You too. Have a good one.